Hello there, small saints. Well, this Sunday, we begin the long, long season of Sundays after Pentecost. So uh, this Sunday is the second Sunday after Pentecost, and we go through these Sundays all the way until late November when we get to Christ the King or the Reign of Christ Sunday. So there's a long time in which we learn in the Gospels and in the epistles, the letters that are in the New Testament, we learn about what the early church was like. We learn about what it is the disciples and uh, the others who surrounded Jesus, what they were supposed to do, how to be church in the world. But also the Old Testament readings or the Hebrew scriptures are a series of stories where we learn a lot about what it was like before Jesus came. And Christians throughout history have read some of these stories as a way of helping to understand the time and the place and the traditions that Jesus had. And so rather than reading the gospel every week, I still will some weeks, but some weeks I'm going to read one of these stories from the Hebrew scriptures, the Old Testament, and talk a little bit about that. And that's what I'm going to do today because we have a really interesting story from the first book of Samuel. So I'm gonna read it and then tell you a little bit about it. A reading from the first book of Samuel. Remember that God led the people of Israel out of Egypt where they were slaves. Then they traveled around in the desert for 40 years. Remember how God took care of them by sending them bread from heaven called manna? Remember when God gave them a new place to live where they could build their own homes and plant gardens? Remember how good God was to these people? Well, apparently the people wanted more, more than freedom and their own land, more than just God taking care of them. They wanted a king because the other countries had kings. They already had judges who helped them decide what was right and what was wrong. They went to Samuel, who was a judge, and told him they wanted a king. Samuel asked them, why do you want a king? Well, we want to be like people in other countries. We want a king who will tell us exactly what to do. Samuel said, do you know what else a king will do? Make your men lead their families and fight in, their, in his armies. The king will make the women work in his household. The kids will miss their moms and dads because they'll be off helping the king. Is that what you want? Are you sure? Yes, we know, said the people. We want a king. We want to fight other countries and to have other countries see how powerful we are. So Samuel talked to God about the people wanting a king. God said, they don't know what they're asking. This makes me unhappy, but give them a king. They'll have to see for themselves what a king is like. Here ends the reading. So the people of Israel at this time were divided up into 12 communities, the 12 tribes of Israel are named for the 12, the sons of Jacob. And they, um, they were kind of not they were loosely um, related, but they had their own systems of governing themselves. They were just lived in communities where they farmed and they um, and they raised their families, and th but they felt that maybe they would have more protection or be safer if they could have a king. And you heard what Samuel said to them, you don't want a king. The king's going to take your men and send them off to war and take your families and make them work in his household. But they insisted that they wanted a king. Now, I don't know if you remember, but there in the, in the earlier parts of the scriptures of the Old Testament, God is the only Lord and King of the people. And so, you know, God felt a bit betrayed by the people when they said, no, we want an actual king. And so God gave them what they asked for. And through the history after that, kings did exactly what Samuel warned that they would do. They took the men and sent them off to war and took families and made them work in his households. 
But there, you know, even out of that, even out of the a lot of bad stuff that came from having a king, there was also King David, who was considered one of the great kings of the Bible and is an ancestor of Jesus. And he did some things that weren't so great too, but he's remembered as the great king of Israel, he and his son Solomon. So even in the bad things that came from this decision, God was still in it. The people still survived, they still thrived, they raised their families. Yes, they had wars and they were in conflict with their neighbors and they were sent into exile and all kinds of things happened. And yet, God was faithful to them and was with them. Even when we mess up, we know this, God still loves us, is still with us, does never, never abandons us. And that's one of the lessons we get from this. God gave these people their heart's desire. They wanted a king, they got a king. It may not have worked out so well, practically speaking, but still God was faithful to the people. And I think that's a really important message for us is that God, no matter what decisions we make, bad ones as well as good ones, God is always going to be faithful to us. Let's have a prayer together. Thank you, God, for loving us, helping us, help us to understand that nothing we can do can separate us from that love. And we thank you for that and for the love of Jesus that we feel every day. Amen. So go share some of that love and remember, don't ever forget that God loves you.